Hi, this is Selena with Simply Collectible Crochet. Today I'm going to show you how I make my shawl toggle. You'll see this on my blog. I'll have the link down below. And today for this demonstration, or at least to practice, you will need some of your favorite buttons of different sizes, something that will go along with your project, obviously. Some yarn needles. You can choose from all different types and sizes. I happen to have some of these. Uh, looks like size 14 to 18 and you'll need some scissors and a scrap of yarn to go uh, to practice with your project. So I'm going to use Coraline's uh, Summer Crush scarf and I'll put that link in the description below as well. So let's get started. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to use this yarn as the silk that I had here is no longer available to me. Um, so I'm just going to use this as an example. Again, this is this is Coraline Summer Crush scarf, obviously, or maybe it's not so obvious. I don't know. Long, narrow. <clears throat> Excuse my allergies. So when you're choosing a button for your project. Uh, let's talk about the size first. You want something that fits between the stitches that is not going to distort your project. This could be a really nice contrast if you're wearing say a leather skirt or a really nice leather jacket along with that. You could get something to match and pull the accessory in with your other items. It could go with your shoes or maybe your bag or something like that. So don't feel like mixing these, um, say leather with silk would be a little too off. I think it would be a really fantastic way to bring out all, bring all of your accessories together in that sense. Um, so let's keep me from rambling, shall we? A more playful look could be maybe these plastic buttons. They seem to fit through nicely without pulling the stitches. Um, they it, it really just slides through pretty easily and that's what you want. You want a smooth button that is not going to catch and uh, destroy your, your stitch work, right? And these are the exact buttons that I used for the tutorial on the blog and uh, they are a two inch button. Let me see if one of these is open now, but I can show you. I do like this color. So I'll show you how you would test that. This is actually, I think it's a plastic button if I'm not mistaken. Nonetheless, you see that would fit through nicely either way. And you're basically going to use two buttons. You'll definitely need two buttons so it would go, um, so you could use one on either side to keep your piece together. So let me show you how I would do that. Um, use, use buttons to accessorize just as you would earrings or a bracelet or anything like that. So your scarf would add one texture, your buttons could add a second texture. And let's get started. These obviously have a different type of back to them. So you would have to thread through here and it would be, you want your buttons when you sew them together. You want to be able to maybe put your fingers between them like this, which will give your piece enough room to kind of shift between the buttons, especially if you're going to use a thicker layer like this. So it also gives, um, it helps to give a little bit so it isn't pulling on your stitches too much. So let me set some of these aside and we'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm ready. The materials that you'll use for your shawl toggle should match your shawl or scarf or cowl, whichever you're going to make. This is not the same yarn, 
but it's similar so it'll give you an idea. You do want to use the same yarn if you can or get something that is a nice contrast and a little whimsical and can work with that. So in this case I'm working with this mesh lacy type piece and um, I've had some other pieces like Coraline in Rio and the upcoming Coraline in Spain that I've worked uh, that is a larger shawl that I've used. I'm going to let out some of this yarn while we talk and I'll show you how I thread it. You want to let out a significant amount, maybe about two uh, anywhere between two to four feet just to give yourself a little working room and I'll go ahead and cut this. What you want to do is double your yarn here and grab this end piece. Basically you are going to thread your yarn as a double. Okay so we'll just go through there and this is the end that we're going to use in, I believe, in the front of the piece, in the front of the button. So let's see. That makes it easier for me to fold that over. And this end, I'm just going to take that to the back. Okay, so we'll start with this end. Hold your buttons. Don't drop your buttons. Hold your buttons in this case because they have this nice shape to them. I'm going to set them opposite each other. They could go this way, absolutely, but just for fun and balance, I think I'm going to do that. So here we go. Now, I, can, I kind of confused myself, so I have to try it a couple of times to see how I did it. I think I go through the front, out the back, through the back, out the front. And then leave this part out here. Okay, so we have that part out here. So now go back through the front, out the back, through the back, out the front. So you're drawing that through. Make sure you're using your thumb and another finger as a spacer. You want to keep that space between them so there's a little give. Okay, then you might hear Mimi meowing in the background. She always thinks I'm talking to her. You're going to use this loop here and this end over here. Okay. Um, take. Let me set this down so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so you see this loop? I'm going to take this end and go through that loop. Easier said than done and leaving that space right there. I'm just going to pull that right through. Okay, so I do need to pick that up. So now you've created this little slip knot here. All right, leaving that little bit of a space. And now you'll go through the space where it had, where it just came out to pull that loop down and over. So you'll go, you came out through there, you went through your loop, you're going back the opposite direction. You still have an opportunity here to kind of tighten it up if you need to, but I think that's perfect. And then we'll go right back up this way and back out where we started. Okay, so can feel it a little snug right there. You can pull that a little bit. Then you're going to go right back through here and you're going to start, you're just going to get this in the back of this button here and just kind of hold that, hold that in the center. All right. And then to kind of tie it down, you can weave through, kind of breaking through those strands. Take your needle right through there. Push. I have to hold it so it doesn't fly out of my hand. Okay, so I've pulled it right through there. And then go back the other way. If you can't really see, you know, just flip it over. Do it however is easiest for you to handle it. It's easier for me to go toward me 
instead of away from me. So I'm going to split these. I hope everything's coming out nice and clear for you. And pull that back through. And it doesn't have to be snug. You just want it to be a little on the secure side. And what I've done in the past, I mean, you could put a little glue on it if you want, like the Aileen's fabric glue. But really, really all you need, I'm just going to thread this back through. I find it's easier to fold it over, pinch it, and then push it through. So here we go. I'll take just one and go right through here. And so now I have one on either side. And then you can just make a knot. I was trying to do that closer so you can see. But I'm just going to make a little, a little knot right there. Nobody will see it. Just you. I can remove that needle. I don't know why I like doing it with a needle. So just pull that snug. Do your ends however you want. Put a little dab of glue on it if you want. Um, E6000 or something like that might be a little too rough for your fabrics. Let me grab the glue that I would show you. I have everything pretty handy so this is what I tend to use. I've used these to make temporary patches, I mean not temporary patches, permanent patches um, from scrap fabrics and it's really really good. It really does hold together in the wash though this you probably will not have to wash it right? But if it accidentally gets stuck in the washer. Nonetheless, um, so that's pretty much what that looks like on both sides. Now I'm just going to go ahead and snip this and I'll leave a little tail. It won't show. Okay. Discard that. And now here comes the magic. You ready? You could say put your scarf on like this leave it kind of hanging and take your toggle take your toggle press that right through the stitches like a cuff link thank you to Diana one of my followers who mentioned that and it will just hold it together nicely and gently just like that as you're wearing it and it won't come apart and that's what it looks like on the other side and there's so many different ways that you could do this let me show you how it works with a similar stitch pattern in my Coraline in Spain. This is glorious. This is made from Red Heart Unforgettable and I will be posting this on my blog very soon. I'm still in the process of verifying the stitch count and all of that. I'm sorry, I'm moving and shaking everything. So, depending on how you're going to wear this scarf, shawl, excuse me, you could say have a nice little roll of fabric. Not sure why I chose to twist it. I think maybe just to kind of show you that the thickness will work out pretty nice and then just wherever you feel like you want to style that you're gonna push that toggle through okay and then wherever you want it to stick or stay you can make that a double fold here obviously see how you'll want another color of yarn unless you want that as part of your accent and then you just attach it to your other side wherever you want this is how I did Coraline in Rio. So then you can put that on however you wish and it just holds everything together nicely. Um, so I hope that makes sense. I mean if you see the picture of Coraline in Rio 
You'll notice how it is gathered on the side. The entire piece is just rolled. This is how I did it. Obviously this one is much larger. But let me do this off camera while I explain it because this piece is so big. So I folded it in half lengthwise and then I folded it in half again and again and again <laughs> as tight as I can get it to where it was a roll and then I did actually roll it. Um, this obviously is so extremely thick but it was so this is folded lengthwise and then I grabbed the pieces together like so and because it's shorter and it was rolled rolled and folded it made these little rosettes on the end so you get those little those little rosettes on the end you can pull that out a little bit okay not that much but let me try again one rosette here so obviously you're going to roll the entire piece and get another little rosette on the other end and I put those together and you take your toggle and just jiggle it till you feel it on the other side and there it is it's trying actually the toggle I used for the other one was much more loose so and the scarf was narrower not much more loose but a little bit so I would just push through that end and then push through the other end and it just kind of stuck together like that tighter looser different nonetheless that's how it works okay Ta-da! so experiment try it out see how you like it when you go to the post for this shawl toggle you'll see Coraline in Spain and I've used a different shawl toggle for the front so it's draped across the front and the front of it again let me do this off camera the front of it is just draped over the shoulders around the neck over the shoulders around the front like this the nice little there it is so it's flat comes down across the chest and it meets like this okay and then I took my toggle behind into both sides and it holds the shawl together so you could wear any shawl draped over like this and it will not slip off your shoulders and sometimes you're you just want to stay warm and keep your shawl on your shoulders and it seems virtually impossible so now you know you can use the shawl toggle if you want to use it in a slightly more decorative way because you absolutely love those buttons you can scrunch this a little show a little of the the chain which is nice to see like this or lay it flat like this this should if I'm not mistaken this should just have to experiment obviously with different ones this should cause it to kind of stay outward like that yeah there you go just like that so with a little more bling in your buttons or with a zesty spicy color like this would look great with this turquoise or even um, the black with maybe 
a rich deep purple in the center or this blue I don't even know what that blue is called but it's so delicious nonetheless that is how you make a shawl toggle it is just as easy to put in as it is or just as easy to remove as it is to put in and there you have it make it with your choice of buttons if you're doing a plastic button with say four little holes you just use the same concept starting with your back loop from the double strand on the outside go in out should I show you real quick let me pause for a moment and get things together okay we're ready so here we go again you will need two buttons and three about four feet three to four feet of yarn just one strand that's doubled over and we'll thread this with the loop to be on the tail side so now you have your the end of your strands at the top and your loop at the tail end we'll use these you want your right sides, which is the front, you want your right sides outward so they are back to back essentially. Okay, So the holes will eventually line up. Um, easiest way I think to do is go out the bottom, up the top, out, back up. Something like that. You can cross them do it however you want but you want to make sure you are leaving that space between the buttons okay if you, this were to be for a much larger crocheted piece you could do this with two fingers between or a little bit less let's say um, you're doing something with a chunky yarn I think this would be great it's a smooth button it will probably have a lot of hold to it so let's pretend we're doing it for something chunky okay so I'm just gonna start off just going in the front out the back in the back out the front okay and I'm not too concerned with how this looks but let's try a crisscross so I'm gonna go up this opposite corner and in the opposite corner from where it went in all right and this is the point where I will go through the loop, catch the loop. And I'll tell you what, this is not going very smoothly with the plastic, so that's probably good because it will keep that distance between the buttons. It doesn't roll through, so you just have to manipulate it a little bit. I think that's going to be perfect. Okay, so we have that little crisscross, and you're going to go right back through there. You can, at this point, go ahead and go across to another button, I suppose. You don't need to make this like Fort Knox tight, you know? Just, um, it's just a little tricky to work with when you're trying to keep it on camera, but once you can get it onto a flat surface, make it a little bit easier. Just back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. Can you see that well? Just going across. So I'm kind of at the center again, but I'm just going to do one more loop somewhere. That should be that should be plenty, unless unless you want a nice thick look. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that's what that would look like, kind of narrow and pulled taut. But if we go ahead and Make it a little bit thicker. Thanks for experimenting with me. That one's already double, so we'll go through here. And you could make it so that your yarn lays nice and flat like that. If you're using a chunky yarn through these, you obviously will not have to do as much as I did there, right? And then we'll stop in the center for this one. Kind of straighten that out. Give it a look. There we go. It's kind of cute, huh? Yeah, it's cute. I could have done a cleaner job, but I didn't know what to expect. 
I can always stop and go again. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and cut through some of these strands. I'm not sure if I caught a whole lot. There we go. I do all my videos now in the evening. Makes it a little bit easier, but you will hear every now and then. You'll hear my son calling me or the cat's doing something insane. Um, this looks like about it right there. Could technically, if you wanted to pull these nice and tight and kind of bring bring all of them together like this you could go all the way around I guess you'd more be turning it into a cord wouldn't you bringing those all together all the way around pulling them a little more taut each time you go around and I'll just Stab it in the middle. And then we'll tie a little knot here. Just just a little one. Not too tight or anything. Okay. And then I can put a little dab of glue right there. This glue really works. It works so well. I mean, a little tiny dot and it's going to soak through your strands or fabric. And it takes a little while to dry, so don't use it right away. I would hate for you to put your shawl on and then go out somewhere. Okay, one reason you may not want to tighten it like that is because this one came out a little loose, but I don't know, maybe it'll look cute. Anyway, so work on that. If you don't like it, you can always snip right through the whole thing and start over. Now we'll just use those. So there you go. There's another shawl toggle. Now if you are doing something um, a lot smaller like knit or maybe even using some sock yarn, you can use some delicate teeny tiny little buttons with thread for something like that. So let me know how you like this project. Let me know how you like oops, how you like these shawl toggles. Let me know how you use them. I would love to see your pictures. Please submit your pictures to me on my blog at simplycollectiblecrochet.com. And yeah, show me show me what of my projects, what of my patterns you're making, what of my DIY projects you're making. And um Go have a fabulous day. Share my videos with a friend. Tell them what you learned here today. And have a great one. Thanks a lot. Bye.